Good day. In this lesson, we'll be exploring the Pearson product moment correlation. These are the objectives for this lesson. At the end of the topic, we will be able to calculate the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. We'll interpret the computed correlation coefficient in terms of its strength and direction, and we will apply and solve real life problems involving correlation analysis. What if our relationship is weak, weak negative or weak positive? Or you may ask, how do we know that it's really moderate and not weak? And how do we know that it's weak and not a zero correlation? Let me introduce the mathematician of the day. We have Carl Pearson. Carl Pearson gave the answers to our questions a while ago. He defined the correlation coefficient, and this was first developed by Augustus Braves and Francis Galton, and he defined it as product moment. That's why we call it the product moment correlation coefficient. And he studied on this one with linear regression. Now, let's start by reviewing the previous problem. Here's our previous course in stats and in physics. You have seen this one in a previous video. So we have the name of the students, the score in statistics, and the score in physics. The score in stats is our x, while the score in physics is our y. Now the question is how to compute the Pearson product moment correlation, or we simply call it the Pearson R. Let's have these eight steps. Step number one, construct a table as shown below. For example, you only have three columns. We make it six. We add a column for x squared, y squared, and xy. Step number two, you square all the entries in the x column and place them in the x squared column. For example, 3 squared, 9, 9 squared, 81, 10 squared, 100, 12 squared, 144, 7 squared, 49. Step 2 is done. Let's have step 3. You square all the entries in the y column and place them in the y squared column. For example, 5 squared. 25, 8 squared, 64, 10 squared, 100, 9 squared, 81, 8 squared, 64. You're done with step 3. Let's go to step 4. You multiply all the entries in the X and Y column and place the entries in the XY column in our last column. For example, 3 times 5, 15, 9 for x, 8 for y, you multiply them, the xy is 72, 10 times 10, the xy is 100, 12 times 9, the xy is 108, 7 times 8, the xy is 56. Now, the entries in our table are complete. Let's go to step 5. You compute for the sum of all entries in each column and we name them the summation and you use the variable for the column. For example, let's have the second column 3 plus 9 plus 10 plus 12 plus 7. The summation of x column is 41. Next column, 5 plus 8 plus 10 plus 9 plus 8, the summation is 40. You do for the next and you'll get these entries. The summation of x squared is 383. The summation of y squared is 334. The summation of xy is 351. You can pause the video as you are going to counter check whether the entries and their summation are correct. We will continue steps 6 to 8 in the next video.